All right, so today is all about um, Inside Senkaku, Honey Hole, 411, Saddle. All these names for essentially the same position. And they're not exactly the same. Inside Senkaku is a very, a kind of a variation of it. But there's many, many names for a similar spot. Why? Because leg locks were treated kind of like the bastard children of Jiu Jitsu for a very long time. So people doing them all kind of have their own names. And Honey Hole is just the 10th planet name because of course it is, because they have the best names. Um, but I'm not gonna go actually very deep into the part that they call Honey Hole and Honey Stick and the 10th planet stuff. I just thought that was a more fun name for the class. Um, we're really gonna focus on keeping control of both legs in this cross ashi position, this kind of specialized cross ashi position. So first I'm gonna go through a couple of standard names to kind of keep your mind on what we're doing and where you should make the shape you should be in. Then we'll go into um, holding there, what you should be thinking about. And then we'll go through a couple common responses on how to deal with them. And we're going to close up with just a couple of finishes. The focus of this class is not being able to submit, but understanding how to keep the leg and keep your partner weak so that you have more chances to submit. If you just grab and go, either you win or they escape. And after they escape, they're going to try and punish you because no one likes you know, being vulnerable. After that, they attack. So um, yeah, there's my little intro statement. So. Yeah, so I have a couple of things that I like to say to put little like bugs in your brain to remember. So all of, of Ashigurami, so Ashigurami is just fun Japanese for leg entanglement. Um, so if you break all of your leg locks into in two parts, um, pinning and breaking, Ashigurami is the pinning portion. And that designation is important because it takes leg locks away from just being cheap tricks, right? grab and go, rip, it gives that bad reputation, into Jiu Jitsu. So just like in regular Jiu Jitsu, we have positions of varying dominance from half guard is widely considered the most neutral position. We both have offense, we're both kind of vulnerable, and then into, you know, side control, our first dominant position, you know, up into neon belly, mount, and then of course he turns around for me. We have back control, widely considered to be the most dominant position in Jiu Jitsu. You know, the climbing the ladder, going up to better and better pins that have more dominance. I'm a firm believer that leg locks the same. So we have positions like 50-50 and mutual ashi that are very, very neutral. It's kind of whoever is the better leg locker or crazier person is going to win, right? I say that because I could be the better leg locker and have a really good form and be trying to have a soul and be kind to Jack and Jack can just try to rip my leg off and he wins because he cares less about me than I do about him. Same thing, if you've seen those matches where two people have a heel hook and they're just like, ah. it's, it's, uh, it's scary, but it does come into who's better or who's crazier. So I don't really like building my game about those neutral positions. Next we have straight Ashigurami. So uh, anytime you have a straight position, if you're confused, if it's straight across, look, if there's a pinky toe that's closest to you, or sorry, a big toe that's closest to you, it's straight Ashigurami. If you have a pinky toe that's closest to you, it's a version of cross Ashigurami. So everything we do today is going to be a cross Ashigurami because these positions we're talking about are all versions of cross Ashigurami. So at any point in time, your partner's big toe is the closest toe to you, you've made a mistake or they've spun around. So everyone make sure pinky is close to you. Next, um, more control would be something like this is a regular cross Ashigurami. But now, once I come over his leg and to here, we get actually, let's turn, that's the best angle for the camera. Let's turn this way. There we go. Um, we're gonna be here. So, don't worry so much about the legs being perfect at this moment. I just want you to understand what we're looking at. I am over here. So, inside Senkaku, literally in Japanese means, or well, inside English, and Senkaku just means triangle because I'm doing a triangle that's on the knot of the triangle is on the inside. But there are other versions of this where I might have my feet together, or I might, even after I've done this, have my foot on his hip. The version I want you to practice first is this pin. Jeff Knight did a really good demo on this at Heidelberg, and I'm gonna just blatantly steal it. And we're gonna do that first, then we're gonna go next. So what I want you to do is to have two thoughts in your head. Thought number one is I am going to triangle choke his thigh. I said thigh, so it must be above the knee, because we wanna keep the knee line. All the knee line in leg locks means is the knee is above the thighs. If his knee is below my thighs, his chances of escaping go up really high. 
So I want to keep this. I want to have my butt as close to this as possible. Then, next most important thing is his free leg. His free leg is where the majority of his defense is going to come from. And so I don't want him to have it. With his free leg, he can do things like kick my hands. He can do things like stand up and all kinds of things that give him far more mobility. When I capture that free leg, what I'm going to do for this first situation is I'm simply going to imagine that I'm doing guillotine on it or I'm doing an Americana on it. I don't actually want to submit him. Next, we get into our angle. So right now, if you look, I'm kind of on the side of him. And this allows me to pincer his thigh. His, uh, thigh yeah. Now, for him to escape, right now, if I keep my triangle, roll that way for me. It kind of gets, if I'm not flexible, this can kind of hurt my feet. And I don't like how that feels. So instead, generally speaking, if my partner starts to roll that way, I'm going to put my feet together, roll that way. So now, as long as I just move my face so I don't break my neck, we can roll forever, and I'm fine. So keeping your feet together allows us to stay connected. Last thing, when I do an actual triangle, I want to put him over here. Why? Because I can keep him, I can squeeze, flex just like a regular triangle. This foot on the ground stops him from going that way. So now he can change our angle, but if he goes that way, turn that way, I can post and stop him. Now notice my foot is here. My foot is behind me, turn that way. He can overpower it. And now... You know, we're over here. Now, this is the worst position for him. I have more control. But if he's really powerful, he might hurt my leg. Come back. So all you're going to do with your partner is one person is going to get here. They're going to triangle this leg and guillotine this leg. And they're going to lay like this. And your job is just to keep it. You're not trying to submit them. You're not trying to break them. Please don't. The beauty of this position is that um, it's pretty hard for them to hurt themselves. But... At any point in this, if you feel pressure, not even pain, just pressure on the inside or outside of your knees, just stop. Like violent spinning is not the answer. Usually um, escaping is going to involve extracting your knee line. But I'm not going to give any coaching yet. I just want you to get to this position because we're going to be using it all class. So one more time. So here, pinky toe, leg comes across. Close our triangle. If you've got really short legs, maybe you can't triangle at all. You just start here. But if you don't have really short legs, you can probably triangle. Come over, imagine you're rowing a boat so both hands are on top, one above the knee, one below the knee. Get your guillotine, fall over, and just chill and let your partner try the best to escape. In your head, count to 30. Once you hit 30, switch. Either after 30, they've escaped, or after 30, they're still there, and you're like, wow, this kind of works. Sound good? Long opening, I know, but we're gonna get faster. One, two, three. <laughs> so, um, it seems like everyone's starting to get there. Some of you that have more leg lock experience are starting to do some basic escapes, but we're going to just deal with various problems that occur. So, the main thing you have to do is just keep aware. Whenever you get a little too cocky or like a little too comfortable is when they're going to escape. So, I'll go back to legs again. All right. So once again, if you're ever here, and you, so if you're symmetrical, you're not in this position. You're in 50 feet. So it's easy to be like, oh, but I'm doing a triangle, pinky toe, but this is on the outside. This is an outside sankaka. Inside sankaka. So for, so little things to just keep on your mind. <laughs> If I, my entire goal is just to keep his legs, right? That means I want, number one, to have his hips on the ground because with hips are on the ground, he's less mobile. If his hips are off the ground, he's putting weight on me, I'm weaker, and he's far more mobile. Hips are on the ground, there's less things he can do. He has to use his arms to move around the floor. Using his legs is gonna be easier. That's why we walk on, on our legs, right? Um, next thing, if I'm really, really close to Jack and he has any sort of fear or panic, which many people do when you grab their legs, he's gonna grab me. He's gonna Muay Thai clinch my head. He's gonna grab my arms. All of this is, is gonna be a problem for me in finishing. So I can't do that. So what I'm gonna do, let's rotate around because now the action is gonna be on the other side of our hips. Because we've rolled over to here. If I'm crunched up like this, Jack can reach my hands. And now I have to deal with him reaching my hands. This is a problem, but if all I do if I do nothing else but just pretend like I'm finishing an armbar, I'm further away. 
he definitely can't reach my head. And reaching my hands, maybe if I'm trying to give them to him. But this is going to be hard as well. So this is one thing that we can do. The next thing, people only grab your hands if your hands sit still. So imagine that you're kind of like a boxer. Mm. What do boxers do? Boxers don't just cover their face in one spot because then they punch the other side. They have a, a kind of a roving hand. So your hand holding the leg is holding the leg. You can kind of say Pledge of Allegiance, right? Put your head up here, like, or just hug yourself, you know, kind of massage your own pectoral muscle, whatever you want to do to keep this in your head, keep this high. Your legs should also be active. What Jack is trying to do when he's escaping, when trying to slip out, he's trying to figure out whichever one of these two legs my attention is on and escape the other one. So if Jack feels me, he's gonna take the bottom leg out. And now I have that issue. If Jack feels me going, he's gonna take the other one out. He's gonna sh uh, shove it in, there you go, like that. But usually what they'll do is he's gonna shove it in hard like a boot and then rip it out with, with his ballerina feet. And it slides out. Now he's gonna turn away from me and I have to chase that leg down. All right? So we're actually gonna go into that because I want you guys to get good at capturing the second leg. So now we spin back around this way. So here's the game we're gonna play. I'm a very big fan of mini games. So we're gonna isolate, so don't do more than this. The whole game is gonna be just like when you were kids. Put your hand on mine. Remember this game when you were kids? Remember this game? Remember this game? Dodge, dodge, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is the game we're playing. So, Jack starts right here. Why? Because this is usually what happens. You get entries where you get here. Sometimes you'll get an entry where you already have them. We're gonna pretend mm -hmm. we had our triangle of lockdown. Are this locked down? He's gonna sneak this foot away. He sneaks it away. I need to immediately, like, he's gonna start coming over here and trying to run away. I have to immediately come, both hands, and come here. So I'm flexible enough that I can do this here, because this is like the one piece of his flexible, my hamstrings. But if you're not, extend out, reach, and then both hands on top. You can't do this slowly. That to resist me. His leg is too strong for me to pull it slowly. <coughs> Right? And, and we're the same size. If he was bigger than me, it's definitely not going to happen. So the second that I feel myself like losing his leg, I have to come and almost smack him. Like both hands on top, one above the knee, one below the knee, and come to here. So that's what you're going to do. He he's going to come out and let him out. Get used to this habit. Do this about five times each. Once you guys both feel comfortable with kind of catching it. But it can't, it can't be... You can't be that. You can't take three or four seconds to like massage his leg and then move it. It's not, not gonna work. Um, so it has to be a violent grab, but he's got reflexes. So what usually happens when I do this to people is I get their leg about to here and then the tension stops me. So just resist naturally, so I'm here. You get to about here. And now even though I have two arms, I can't break through. So all you're gonna do to overcome this is you're literally gonna just shake it. And I, that's literally what I mean. You keep resisting. You just shake it. It looks silly. It looks like he's acting. But it's really all you do. Just take the leg, shake it. Because his leg is naturally countering my force right now. So his brain is like, push that way. And he's, he can do that. He'll win. But when I start moving his leg in weird positions and shaking it, his brain doesn't know how to counteract it. And that becomes mine. All right? But you have to pull above the knee. If I put both below, he's going to open his knee and I'm never gonna get it. If we're both above, he's gonna open it the other way, and they're gonna get it. So this is the game. Sit with your partner. First, have their leg, let them out. You grab, do it five times. Once you've done it, you put their leg here, and hit. they can't move until you touch them. And it's just like, This is the game, okay? So play slaps with your partner. One, two, three. All right, guys, a quick talk about um, legalities, because if you guys are using this, you're probably competing, or at a minimum, you're doing this at your gym, and you don't want your training partners to look at you like you're the devil. Or maybe you do, maybe that's your thing. But, um, words. So whenever you hear the word reaping, what reaping means is applying inside-out oh, inside pressure to the knee. So usually it's in regular ashigurami, his leg is here, I'm applying pressure from the outside, in, and turning his knee in. Whether his knee turns or not, um, doesn't really matter. 
because in the case of in the case of safety, this this is the safety concern they had is that if I do this, I'm putting pressure inside out, and if he doesn't go with the pressure, he can hurt himself. When it comes to the rules, it's usually described as things like putting your foot past this line. But as you can look, I'm putting absolutely no pressure on his knee, but I'm technically reaping them to cross the center of his thigh. So the enforcement of the rule gets a little silly because you're not actually doing the thing. It's supposed to be scary. Um, doing this, for example, because in cross ashi, there is precisely zero pressure on his knee. I didn't even touch it, but I will still get disqualified. However, that's because I put my leg outside him. However, if I, instead of moving my leg, I put my leg in the beginning again, I move my butt inside out, I don't disqualify. Because <laughs> I might be in a reach position, I never reaped, it just magically got here. So, go to the other side, I'm over on this side, right? I'm in a reach position. So, with the language of Jiu Jitsu referees, this leg is reaped, which means it has like a get out of jail free pass. It's on safety. I can't touch it. If I touch this leg with my hands, I get disqualified. If you're playing with those rules. Personally, if you like, like, and so, but this leg is free. I can do whatever I want to this leg as long as it's with my rule set. So at white belt, I can be in this position and I can submit this leg as long as my hands don't touch this leg. Or even honestly, if my hand is hovering below this leg, I get disqualified because I was thinking about touching. <laughs> All right, so just know if you're in one of those rule sets, do this. Also, a lot of referees don't fully understand these rules. The head referee will always understand these rules, but the low referees won't. If you want to play this position, a tournament that involves GI or IBJF, go to the rules meeting. Talk to your referees. See their understanding of these rules so that you're on the same page. You go to one tournament where you have the head referees who deeply understand the rules, you'll be fine. You go to another tournament where maybe they don't play legs that often in your, in your country or your area, and they're just like, no, it's reaps, disqualified. So just make sure that you know. If your referee is confused when you're talking to them, just don't do it. Seriously, like if they don't understand these rules, they're gonna disqualify you. It's just how it's gonna happen. So, but if you're one of the fun rule sets where this is all legal and fun, then we get to do these things. But just know this next thing we're gonna do, which is just a regular straight ankle walking is totally legal even at white belts in every single tournament, but that doesn't mean they're not gonna disqualify you. Because it looks like it should be illegal. It looks like I'm doing bad things, even though I'm not. So, I'm right here. We're just going to do this one submission just because it's so basic. And um, I had a good detail recently that, that fixed it for me. So what most people used to do right here is they grab this and they lean back with the whole body like so. And as you can see, Jack is very happy. He's not at all faced. Maybe I'll kick him. Maybe I'll make some crazy faces. But I'm not really doing anything. I can do this if I really hulk out, but then I'm exhausted if I fail. Little detail that, that kind of changed my, my world with all my straight ankle locks was um, I think Sven told me. I think he got it from Dean Lister, is just put your thumb on your chin. So I'm here, take my thumb, touch my chin. That's it. And for the entirety of my ankle lock, I don't let my thumb stop touching my chin. Now obviously there's all these other great details, right? I wanna be lower on the leg, I wanna be tight, all of these are good too. But if I have my thumb on my chin and I lean back now, I get an easy tap, I didn't even fall down. If I let my thumb leave my chin, I can maybe get it. But look at all the extra work I had to do. Why? With my thumb on my chin, the thing I'm trying to break with doesn't move. It stays. And now I have the entirety of my core and my chest and my shoulders, they're all coming to bear along with my hips. So just feel this real fast with your partner because we've been practicing capturing this thing. Then all you're gonna do is bring your hands in, put your thumb on your chin, and just lean back. So I don't care how far you fall, but for now, try to just fall straight back. We're, like I said, this, we're just cooperating, but keep your thumb touching your chin. I actually like physically doing this as a little, like, red ribbon on my finger to remember. Put your thumb on my chin, and you get it. Feel this real fast, and then we'll get back into um, keeping this position. Have fun. One, two, three. Another detail for that, so your chest matters. So there's two general chest positions. I never used to have a name for them, thanks to our fellow Globetrotter instructors, I, I have them. So Chris Paynes calls this a proud chest, 
So your shoulders are back, your chest is out, like this, right? Like you're Superman or something, or Wonder Woman, whoever you like. Chest big. And you get a concave chest, like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, right? Like, like the Quasimodo chest. So we don't want to be Quasimodo, because this is going to make it very easy for them to not be submitted. We want to be Superman, all right? So keep your chin on your chest. Also, when you're falling, a lot of you guys are doing this. No, keep them together, okay? So just showing you that real quick on jet. There's like a kind of a way to screw it up. I'm here. If I lean forward, like hunch back, even though my chest is here, I'm just moving this back. Nothing is happening. I do the same thing, and now I get proud like Superman. All right, proud, good. So we've dealt with the first situation, which is our partner is freeing their leg. Now, the next thing that your partner can do that we're going to deal with is he's going to try and drive into us. Along the way, I'm going to show you guys a pretty good um, defense. Now, what you're doing here is going to depend on your rule set. If he hooks are allowed, Jack is going to automatically assume that's what I want. Because in a heel look legal tournament, it's like the premium submission. The inside heel look, this is what everyone wants because people tap to this. Outside heel look, some people literally have already like lost these ligaments and so they just don't tap. Like, just the truth of it. They just don't because they're like, oh, you can't break what's not there. All right? Whereas inside heel looks, everybody taps these because of the fact that this is like a career changing or a life changing injury. So it makes sense to tap. So that being said, once again, if you feel pressure, tap. If you see your partner's leg like blah, and they're not tapping, just stop. Be like, hey, do you feel anything? Like, no, I don't feel anything. You sure? Because your knee's about to snap. Maybe we should stop doing this. <laughs> eye contact is your friend. Anytime I have a position that's right, I always look in my partner's eyes and give them a look like, dude, maybe we should stop. And sometimes they have a great defense. I didn't realize it, but we have to talk. I shouldn't be like, hmm? if he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Right? So, um, I'm just going to show fast. I'm going to explain the, the escape we're going to do. So, there's two versions of this escape, but the general idea is the next step behind the last one. So, last time your partner got away. So, now we're saying your partner got away, and now they're going to use this leg for something. What they're going to use it for is standing up. So, there's kind of a trivial way of standing up where I just stand up and try and run away. But if he's good, what he's going to do is he's going to stand up and drive into me. So, he has one foot and one hand and he's gonna cross face. So I'm gonna drive in, like so, and then I'm gonna take this across Jack's face. He's gonna be trying to hold me down, like, and try to get my leg, and even try to reach this leg. But he has nothing to base him, like reach forward, try to grab my leg. He has no base, he's trying to take my legs. And so what happens, he falls over. I get to here. Now right here, this is called dead half. Who wins this position really, truthfully for me, depends upon the cross face. If I have no cross face, Jack can curl up underneath me and re-attack, knock me back down, and I'm gonna have all kinds of problems again, right? But if I have the cross face, he can't do that. And from here, I'm just gonna sprawl. And now I get side control. And I will punish him for trying to take my legs, crush him, use all that great side control pressure stuff. So all we're gonna do is to get used to that is actually just do that real fast. So your partner's gonna be here, right? We played the last game, they won it. Hand on the floor, foot on the floor, hips off the floor. Then from here, I'm gonna be throwing my foot with pointed toes because I don't want to be heel Now, this is a better heel look safety position. I would only do this if Jack hasn't got my heel. If Jack has my heel exposed, too late. It's not time for this anymore. I have to get my heel out. So this is a situation where Jack has control of me but not the control of my heel. Important designation. He has the position but he has not exposed my heel and I'm not in threat of being submitted at this moment. Timing matters. There's times when we can do this, and there's times when it's just too late. I stand up and start driving. I change the angle. I come over. Cross face. Those of you that are not acrobatically inclined, we can show a, a friendlier version. Because the way that I usually do this is, is kind of like top weight. I'll come here. Right? But if you're like, dude, jumping's too much, I understand. Lift. Put your foot on the floor. He can't heel hook things that are on the floor. Lean, drive, 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 drive. Here we are. From here, knee over. Get with your partner, do that real fast. One, two, three. So, 
think about this. This escape is not the most popular escape, but it's something that I always have to deal with what people are going to do when they are experts and beginners. Because if I can only leg lock people that are good at leg locks, then that's kind of strange, right? If you do like really beginner stuff and I can't deal with it, it's a problem. And usually what will happen is people that panic will try and stand. They'll try and stand or want run. If they realize they can't run, they'll try and stand while we're going through this. But what I just showed you is kind of like a technical way to do what people do. But truthfully, what people who are panicking do is they simply just try and get on top. They use a hand and a leg and they just drive. And they'll do that. Not that that's, but the other thing is, the reason why they're doing this is this is safe. There's no heel anymore. But I'm still entangled. Cross myself. So, to deal with this, um, I didn't steal, I guess I definitely stole this fruit for Aaron Milne. I, he did this to me when I visited a school in Oregon. And I kind of fell in love with it, and I kind of built a whole game around this one little thing he does. And I'm not sure if he did it in Iceland or not, but all he does is when he's in the, um, not necessarily in Ashidra, uh, inside Senkaku, but when he's here, he takes this hand, not on the outside, but kind of between his legs, and grabs his own shin. And so I've kind of named this like the Millum Wedge, because I use it all over enough that I had to give it a name. Um, the only downside to this position is that it's, um, in leg locks, sometimes you hit people's junk, and your shin is near their junk, and your hand is on your shin. So there might be some uncomfortable moments. Um, it's really the only downside of this position. Um, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because in this moment, he's got a foot, and he's got a hand, and that hand's coming from my face. So all I'm gonna do is even, even the, the territory. So from right here, I'm fine, but once I see him about to drive and explode, I have to win. So I put my hand down, and now one hand to one hand. My leg down, one leg to one leg. Now we're even, so who's gonna win? Well, whoever's bigger, but now I have a wedge. So drive into me. All right, important thing, where your leg is matters. If my leg is over here, drive into me. I can't drive, I fall down. My leg has to be behind me. But there's an advantage in having my knee underneath his, his, his calf. So you have to balance that. This is making him weaker, this is making me stronger. Just drive in. From here I have choice, I don't have to take leg locks anymore. Now this becomes a great guard passing situation. Drive into me, he's trying to get on top. You know what, I wanna be on top. And now from right here, now I can slide over here and I have to make him make a choice. Either I can hug my middle finger into his far armpit, cross face him, do like a guard pass, or if he leaves his legs this far open, what I like to do is to be a little fancy, shake my foot over to here, sorry about that, and then knee on belly. With the last option, of course, being if I get here and he's like, oh God, no, don't pass my guard, close your half guard real tight. Well, then he's asking, let's turn it over here so you can see, he's asking for me to just take his legs again. Go back to where we started. So this is the way that I play whenever someone starts driving into me. I, I was trying to collect his leg. I lost it. He's going to drive into me. Oh, no. Keep driving in. Catch my wedge. Knock him down. Just, this door's open. Close the door. Door's closed. Make sense? Play with it. I'm a very big fan of it. Then we're going to finish class dealing with the most popular defenses, which is them kind of trying to clear the knee line and run away. One, two, three. So like I tend to do in my classes, I like starting really, really fundamental and basic. And then we, at the very end, like the last 10 minutes, I usually throw some stuff at you that might be a little too much. But it's because, not because I just don't want you guys to learn it, but we have beginners and immediate advanced, and I want everyone to get something. Because there's some people here who are like, dude, that's a foot. There's other people here that are like, I knew this stuff. So I want to give everybody something. So, this is, there's many ways of escaping, but there's, this is kind of, not the most popular, but what most people do. So, let's escape. Um, for all I know, because I learned this one year ago at um, Craig Jones' Helo Camp, he's always evolving. He probably has a better way of doing this right now. But this is the way that I tend to escape when people are trying to expose my heels. So I'm right here. So just like last time, last time what did I do? I freed the free leg and I came over here, 
Last time we put it over here and we drove in. So the opposite of that would be to turn away. So angle is important. Right now, you see how when I'm, I'm straight with him, how my heel is like perfectly situated for him to start attacking. My toes are in his armpit, like this is a really good day for him. But the more that I start changing my angle, right? If I point my toes, my heel gets smaller. Big heel, little heel. Now I'm gonna take my heel, I'm gonna hide it right here. I'll grab my heel. So um, there's a move called the heel slip. I consider it intermediate or advanced just because of the fact that you're already vulnerable. And so you do that. And people are getting really good at dealing with this. This, what I just showed you, is not enough to start using it. You're gonna break your knee, you're gonna get injured. Um, I highly recommend Eddie Cummings. He teaches it, I think, better than anyone else. Um, look into Eddie Cummings, heel slip. He'll do, he do a better job than me of teaching this. But know this exists and know that you don't want your heel exposed. Your heel exposed is bad. Point your toes, turn away. All right, so now my heel is turned away. It's, he's gonna chase it down. He's gonna lean on his side, his elbow on the mat, and now he's gonna start chasing my heel. I can't just sit here, he's gonna get it eventually. So what am I doing? I'm gonna take my hips, go away. They're outside of his legs, this is important. If I do this, he's gonna use his legs to keep me entangled and bad things are gonna happen. Other thing, I know people teach you sometimes as curling around behind you, but there are ways to dig this out. There are ways where this turns out to be a, a problem for me. So I want you to keep your legs straight and point it. Um, keep your leg pointed, take this leg over here. And now what I'm gonna do is, it's called the runner escape. I'm not gonna violently spin, I'm gonna push this knee, really important, and I'm gonna try and compose a base, get up to a knee. Now what I've done, just like last time, my head's higher than his, this is good, and then from here, I'm gonna keep pushing that knee, pull my knee out, and then face him. Do it again, this is the complicated way. Also, through all of this, important thing to realize, at any point in time, Jack gets lazy, I can just put my head on the floor, just do that. It looks stupid simple, but it really is just that simple. If your partner ever gets too obsessed with getting this leg, it's not, his tension isn't here, so I go for that one. That easy. If you're a Gumby type person, exact same thing, he's going for this leg. Your entire goal in life is make this knee below the thighs. As long as he doesn't have a good bite on this one, that's pretty easy. So, Think with our original class, like grab it again. He had this one, we managed to free it. Know that when you manage to free it, the other guys will immediately drop and attack this one. So when you're freeing this leg, you have to be aware that he's gonna immediately be coming for this one. So don't leave it hanging out. Comes out. So actually, just, just play with those. Play with just getting your knee up knee line. Know that this one right here is kind of what you want, but I just want you to keep the concept of clearing the knee line. Because we're going to deal with countering that hip down that I just showed you. But if you don't know how to do it, the people that are attacking you can't attack it. So a small time just to play with that. Choose one of them. You don't need them all. If you're already like overloading, it's okay. End of class. Retain what you did before. One, two, three. Deal with this, we're gonna kind of change what we're doing on our feet. Remember before, I told you guys, triangle and the foot are the two things we do. How are you? It all depends on what my partner's doing. So I'm gonna just drop him into a trap. So I'm reaching for this, I feel that he's running away. So I'm running away. What I have to do is before he gets his full angle right now, keep going, keep going, get up on your knee. This is too late. Unless I'm gonna do things that are kind of, come back up, kind of like, it. Kind of cute, like slices and stuff. But I want a heel look. I want like a premium finish. Come back down. So I'm here. I have to kind of know what he's doing, right? So what did he do before? He drove into me. He ran away from me. But it, if he takes his leg out of range, I know he's running. So I need to immediately switch from this triangle position, bring my heel into his crotch, do a leg curl, bring my butt to here. Take my foot, I'm gonna reinforce this, like so. And what I'm gonna be doing is trying to shove my foot up his butt. So my right leg's job is to handle this axis, I'm gonna curl to here. My left leg's job is gonna be driving this foot, just like this is a wedge and this is a hammer, up his butt. And then from right here, my thighs are gonna come down and wedge on the top. 
So my sh arch of my foot is going to be in some uncomfortable places, and um, my butt is going to be scrolling here. This is going to slow down his rotation. Now his toes are right here. Take my elbow on top of them. From right here, I drive my hips in. So from right here, what am I doing? The escape was to keep your legs straight. I'm killing that. I don't want his leg to be straight, so I'm forcing a bend into his leg. What this is doing is exposing his heel. I'm going to lean up. Be like, oh, look, it's a foot. Grab it. There's also a situation, I'm going to assume that Jack is really, really good. If Jack is a beginner, then maybe when I do this, I can just do this and I catch the heel. But I'm going to assume, I'm going to give Jack credit and I say he's good. I'm going to use my second hand to help. I raise up, I catch the heel. Now I come back around, force a bend in his toes. Right? They were pointed, forcing it by doing that. Sorry, I'm going to loosen up. So right here, so now I have the heel. My feet are together, reinforcing it, and I don't finish with my hands. I put my hands through and I just get my grip. I can go, I can go palm to palm, I can keep this heel cup, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that I keep this knee line and that I have his heel. And I finish with my hips. I want my hips touching the back of his knee like so. And I have what I need. Do this quickly, do this slowly. Why change it last? Because truthfully, this, this is kind of the, the part where things are actually dangerous. Like people, like, I, I often say like, that's not the dangerous, but this particular situation is risky and dangerous. So I recommend if you don't play Helix, maybe don't do this one. Review the rest of class. But if you're more advanced, this is why I'm including this for you at the end of class. Is, is this really kind of high level premium one that I, I use a lot. Coming to here, hands together. The mantra I always have for my heel looks are hands high, head low, throw the hips in. I should be able to get it really small. All right, my hips are a centimeter off the floor. I'm moving them into here. This is not the best version of this. There's often versions that I prefer to have this like this. But I'm doing it as a counter versus as a primary attack. As a primary attack, I would land right here. And then Jack's leg would look a little different. But he was trying to escape. And so I'm tracking him down and bringing him back. By doing a little uppercut right here. Okay, so I wouldn't do it this way, but just I'm leaning up so you can see the configuration was happening. I'm holding this still. My hips are blowing out the side of his knee. All right, uh, we don't have time to practice it because I don't want to be with nice instructors. So that wasn't one to practice. That was kind of a bonus. If you have questions, ask me. If you, yeah, any open mat, grab me if you want to roll. Thank you guys for coming to class.